Okay, so today the three questions that we're going to be doing are basically an overview of the last two weeks of this chapter, how we're going to be solving quadratics using multiple methods, one that you know, one that you sort of know, and one that's totally brand new. So let's take a look, write down these steps, and then make sure that you glue this into your math notebook because this is going to be a key reference that we look back at often. So the first one that we do know is solve by factoring. In this one, we take a look at is it possible to factor this quadratic? And this is usually our method of choice, if so, because it usually is what we consider the easiest method. So we ask ourselves, what times what makes 54, so negative 54, and subtracts to give us 3? So off to the side, you can make a little list, 1 times 54, 2 times 27, 3 goes in 18 times, 4 does not go in, 5 does not go in, 6 times 9 makes 54. So here's our list of factors, and then we choose the one that subtracts to give us 3. Remember that the larger factor is going to match the sign on the bottom, because negative 9 plus 6 is what gives us negative 3. Now we have this in factors, but we're solving by factoring. So we take each factor by the zero product property and solve each one. The opposite of x minus 9 is going to be positive 9. The opposite of x plus 6 is going to be negative 6. Because this is just asking for the solutions, we do not write it in intercept form. My quadratic is solved. I have two real roots, and there they are, negative 6 and 9. Notice I don't put parentheses around these or anything. It should not look like a coordinate pair. These are just two separate answers. So let's go summarize our steps. And you do not have to write my steps. You should write down steps that make sense to you. So step one, we factored. Now, you can use the x the a times c over b, if that makes sense for you. But if you do not need the x, or you don't prefer the x, or the x doesn't work for you, the goal is just to factor it however works for you. We then set the factors equal to 0. And then we solved using zero product property. So the factoring part, that was this right here. The setting the factors equal to zero That's this part right here. And then solving each factor using zero product property was this part right here. Okay, so you should already be solid at this method. This one should just be a review. Hopefully you agree. Now solving by completing the square, the reason I say that this one is something you sort of know is because we have used complete the square for finding vertex form, but now we're going to change just a couple things and actually use it to solve. So it's all the same steps you're used to, plus a couple new things. So here's what I mean. Step one, you got it. Make space. Just like before, we still do step one, make space. Step two, you got it again. B work is still the same. So we're going to take half of our middle B, which in this case happens to be a negative 10. What is negative 10 divided by 2 give us? Negative 5. What is negative 5 squared? It's 25. So the B work still applies like you're used to. We then add and subtract to balance that same B work. So plus 25 
minus 25. Same exact step you're used to from before. So at this point, we would go into the x minus 5 squared factors. And we're at vertex form, where we get the factors and the constant. OK, so this is where we used to leave it for vertex form. Here comes the new part. We're going to now add the constant to both sides and solve by square rooting. So go ahead and try it, plusing 40 to both sides gives me 40 equals x minus 5 squared. We're then going to square root both sides in order to solve. So on the 40 side, we could say what times what equals 40. We would break it down into 2 times 2 times 10. A 2 comes out, a 10 stays in. So this side becomes plus or minus 2 root 10. I hope that makes sense to you and you're comfortable with that. On this side, the square root of anything squared is just that anything. And our last step is adding 5 to both sides. We get two real roots of the following answer. 5 plus or minus 2 root 10. So as you guys can see, up until about right here, you know this method, but we need to do a little work to get used to the rest of the part on the bottom. All right, so this step here, make space, was bumping over this negative 15. This step here, the B work, was on this B. This step right here, the perfect square factors, was this step right here. And this right here, combining the constant, was this right here. Now the new steps, we're adding the constant to both sides and solving by square rooting. And that was all of this <laughs> down here. Okay. Okay, so we'll work on that completing the square one. But again, it's something you're sort of familiar with. We're just going to add to it. Okay, last but not least, I have been having you get me A, B, and C as practice for this formula. So A equals B equals C equals, go ahead and try that. All right, did you get that A equals 3, B equals negative 2, and C equals 4? Good job. So what have we been practicing this for? Well, when you can't factor something, and maybe we don't prefer to do the complete the square method, there is one final formula that works in all cases whenever you want. This is called the quadratic formula method. We're going to plug in B, plug in A, and plug in C, and simplify. So negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. Notice all I did so far was get the parentheses ready. I'm going to plug in a here and here. I'm going to plug in b here and here. And I'm going to plug in c here. All right, negative b, negative or b squared minus 4 times a times C all over 2A. Okay, simplify the front first. Negative times negative is positive 2. Plus or minus, simplify the bottom next 6. Underneath this radical is called the discriminant. This part is where a lot of errors are made, so go slow. What's negative 2 squared? Did you get positive 2? Minus 4 times 3 times 4, that's 12, and 4 is 48. So my final answer here 
is going to be, oops, I got to leave space for the steps, x equals 2 plus or minus square root of negative 44 over 6. Now we haven't learned this yet, but we're going to learn how to simplify a negative under the radical. You know how 44 would be 4 times 11? So this would be 2 root 11, but it's got a negative, so we're going to learn about something called i. All over 6. Notice that there's a 2, there's a 2, there's a 6, and this can be fully simplified by saying 2 goes into 2 once, once, 3 times. My final answer is 1 plus or minus i root 11 over 3. So this is showing you one example of a quadratic formula and how much we need to practice this in order to be proficient at it. This is our third and final method that we're going to be learning to solve quadratics over the next two weeks. So let's go summarize this in steps. Step one, get ABC. Step two, plug into formula. Step three, simplify your plugged in formula. And four, analyze the roots, the type of answers that you got, to see if they are real or imaginary. All right, and all of that will come later, but go ahead and get this beautiful first notes written into and glued into your notebooks. Thank you for doing this on the sub day. I appreciate it.